How would you handle strangers during a bug-in situation? Today, I'll share essential tips for managing these types of encounters safely. Learn how to assess situations, fortify your home, engage cautiously, decide on aid, and prepare for self-defense. The first thing you must do before any interaction is that you need to gather as much information as possible. In a bug-in situation, assessing the circumstances surrounding a stranger's presence is crucial. You're not just looking out for yourself, but also for the safety of your family and your hard-earned resources. Firstly, observe from a strategic, hidden vantage point. This could be a concealed window, a peephole, or even a surveillance camera. The goal here is to ensure your safety while gaining a comprehensive view of the situation outside. Your best allies in this endeavor are tools that increase your vision range, like binoculars or cameras. These devices allow you to discern important details from a safe distance without revealing your location. You can observe the stranger's physical condition, their attire, the way they move, and even if they carry any weapons. But observing isn't just about looking, it's about analyzing. What is the stranger doing? Are they knocking on doors, peering into windows, or just passing by? Are they alone or in a group? These details can help you determine their intentions. A person's behavior often provides clues about their state of mind. An individual who appears anxious, frantic, or aggressive might be desperate or dangerous. On the other hand, a person who seems calm and methodical may just be looking for assistance or trying to find their bearings. Keep in mind that desperation can make people do things they wouldn't normally do. A seemingly harmless individual might pose a threat if they are desperate enough. On the flip side, not everyone who stumbles upon your bug in location is a potential enemy. They could be just as scared and confused as you are in these uncertain times. It's important to remain level-headed and rational. Jumping to conclusions can escalate a situation unnecessarily, and equally, letting your guard down too quickly could put you in harm's way. Remember, knowledge is power. Taking the time to assess can make all the difference. The more information you have, the better you can plan your next move, and in a bug-in situation, this could mean the difference between peace and conflict, safety and danger, or even life and death. But assessing the situation alone is not enough. You must invest to turn your house into a fortress. I know it sounds a bit extreme, but trust me, a little preparation goes a long way. Picture your home as your last stand, your sanctuary against the storm. You want it to be as tough as nails. First, let's focus on the front lines, your doors and windows. Reinforce them with solid materials. I'm not talking about fancy decorative stuff. Think sturdy metal bars or thick plywood. It might not win any design awards, but it'll sure deter unwanted visitors. Now you need to be able to hear those visitors before they're knocking on your door. That's where alarms and sensors come in handy. Imagine having a built-in early warning system. It's like having a trusty guard dog without the slobber in the feeding schedule. Consider perimeter alarms that can detect movement outside your home, or motion sensors that will pick up on activity inside. The sooner you know someone's there, the sooner you can react. Here's another layer of defense, distraction cupboards. These are like decoy treasure chests filled with less valuable stuff. It's a little psychological trick. If someone breaks in, they might get distracted by the easily accessible items and leave your real valuables alone. Think of it like leaving out a plate of food for a hungry person. They might take the food and are less likely to go searching for your entire hidden stockpile of food. And then there's the ultimate retreat, the safe room. This is your personal panic room, your fortress within a fortress. Stock it with essentials like food, water, medical supplies, and a way to communicate with the outside world. Think canned goods, a first aid kit, a battery powered radio, and a crank flashlight. The goal is to be self-sufficient for a while if you need to be. Remember, the goal isn't to turn your home into an impenetrable bunker. It's about creating layers of defense that buy you time. You want to make it difficult for intruders, not challenge them to a siege. Imagine your house as an onion. You want multiple layers of protection. So if someone breaks through one layer, they're met with another. We've talked about fortifying your castle and setting up your defenses. Now let's talk about the tricky part dealing with people. Communication is a funny thing. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. In a bug-in situation, it's both. On one hand, you want to know what's going on outside your walls. On the other hand, you don't want to put yourself at risk. 
So how do you strike a balance between caution and compassion? Well, the rule is, keep your distance. Talk to them from a safe place. An intercom or a loudspeaker is ideal, but if you don't have those, a window or a door with a strong lock will do. I recommend these questions you might want to ask to assess the situation. What do you want? This will give you a quick read on their intentions. Are they looking for a handout? Are they desperate? Or are they in trouble? Why are you here? This can help you figure out if they're a threat or just lost. Were they looking for you specifically, or did they just stumble upon your place? Their answer can also reveal how prepared they are. If they have a plan, it might be a sign that they're more dangerous. Do you need help? This shows that you're not completely heartless, but it also gives you a chance to assess their situation. Are they truly in need? Or are they just trying to manipulate you? Pay close attention to their response. If they seem overly eager or if their story doesn't add up, it's a red flag. Remember, it's not just about what they say, but how they say it. Pay attention to their tone of voice, their body language, and any inconsistencies in their story. These things can tell you a lot. For example, if someone is asking for food and water, but they're well-dressed and well-rested, that might be a cause for concern. On the other hand, if someone is visibly injured or exhausted, they're more likely to be telling the truth. Now here's the tough part. You don't owe them anything. You're not obligated to help them. Your primary concern is your safety and the safety of your loved ones. But helping someone in need can be a rewarding experience, and it can also build goodwill. After all, in a bug-in situation, we're all in this together. If you decide to offer assistance, start small and be cautious. Maybe you can provide some food and water without letting them inside. Perhaps you can offer medical aid or share some knowledge about survival skills. The key is to find a way to help that doesn't compromise your own security. Remember, the situation can change quickly. If things start to feel off, if they get aggressive or threatening, cut the conversation short and implement your defensive strategies. You're in control. You decide who comes in and who stays out. Your words can be powerful tools, but they're not magic. Sometimes the best thing to say is nothing at all. But in the right situation, a well-timed word or a small act of kindness can make a big difference. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. No, not the one you might have in your backyard if you're really prepping hard. I'm talking about the tough choices you have to make. After you've done your observation, your communication, and your assessment, it's time to decide what to do next. This is where the rubber really meets the road. First things first, take a deep breath. Panic is your enemy. You need a clear head to make good decisions. Now look at your resources. Do you have enough food? water and medical supplies for yourself and your family? Can you spare some without putting yourselves at risk? These are the questions you need to ask yourself honestly. If you can help, great, but do it carefully. Maybe leave supplies outside your door and let them know when it's safe to pick them up. Remember, even in the darkest of times, a little kindness can go a long way, but your safety always comes first. Now here's the hard truth. Sometimes you just can't help. Maybe you've already given everything you can. Maybe the situation is too dangerous. Whatever the reason, it's okay to say no. It's okay to protect yourself and your loved ones. Just be firm and polite. Something like, I'm really sorry, but I can't help you right now should do the trick. Let's also talk about self-defense. Nobody wants to think about it, but it's a reality. You have to be prepared for the worst. This doesn't mean you're itching for a fight. It means you're ready to protect yourself and your loved ones if you have to. Consider non-lethal options first. A well-aimed blast from a hose can be surprisingly effective at deterring someone who's intent on getting into your home. Or a can of pepper spray can be a useful tool for creating distance and stopping an attacker. Even a loud air horn or a barking dog, if you have one, can be enough to scare someone off. But if things escalate, you might need to use more forceful methods. The key is to be prepared, but to avoid violence if possible. If you have time, consider de-escalation tactics. Maybe try talking to the person and calmly explaining that they need to leave. But if they become aggressive or threaten to harm you, you have the right to defend yourself. Let me give you some of the tips I would use for self-defense in a bug-in situation. First, 
Be aware of your surroundings and trust your gut. If something feels off, it probably is. Don't be afraid to retreat to a safe room or call for help if you have a way to do so. Second, have a plan. If someone breaks in, know what you're going to do. Will you try to barricade yourself in a room? Will you use a non-lethal deterrent? Will you use a firearm as a last resort? Having a plan can help you react quickly and decisively in a stressful situation. One thing I specifically do is that I take self-defense classes. Learning some basic self-defense techniques can give you the confidence and skills you need to protect yourself. I also practice using self-defense tools. If you have pepper spray or a firearm, make sure you know how to use them safely and effectively. Look, I know this is heavy stuff, but it's important to be realistic. The world can be a tough place, especially in a crisis. By being prepared and making smart decisions, you can increase your chances of staying safe. Remember, your well-being is your top priority. Remember, defense is your last resort. The goal is always to avoid violence if possible, but if you find yourself in a situation where you have to protect yourself or your loved ones, you need to be ready. First, let's talk about non-lethal options. These are your go-to tools for creating distance and buying yourself time. Think pepper spray, stun guns, or even a baseball bat. These things can be effective for temporarily incapacitating an attacker, but they're not foolproof. Let's be honest, they're not magic wands. An attacker could be wearing protective gear, or they might be hopped up on adrenaline and power through the pain. That's why it's crucial to be trained in how to use these tools effectively. Practice deploying your pepper spray or using your stun gun in a controlled environment. Get comfortable with them, so you can react quickly and decisively in a stressful situation. Let's also talk about firearms. This is a big one, and it's not a decision to be taken lightly. If you decide to own a firearm for self-defense, make sure you're fully trained in its use. Safety is paramount. Here's a story from my own experience that highlights the importance of training. I used to be a terrible shot. I mean, truly awful. But after a break-in at my friend's house, I decided it was time to learn how to defend myself. I took a gun safety course and then practiced regularly at the range. It wasn't easy, but I stuck with it. And let me tell you, the feeling of confidence that came with knowing how to use a firearm properly was worth every second. But here's the thing. Owning a gun doesn't make you invincible. It doesn't mean you should go looking for trouble. In fact, the best weapon you have is your brain. De-escalation is key. If you can talk your way out of a situation, that's the best possible outcome. Stay calm, be assertive, and try to understand what the other person wants. Sometimes, all they need is to be heard. If you can safely retreat, do it. Put distance between yourself and the threat. Your goal is to survive, not to be a hero. And remember, the best fight is the one you never have to have. The needs of people with disabilities in a survival situation is a topic that often gets overlooked, but it's absolutely crucial. Look, I get it. Being prepared for a crisis is tough for everyone. But if you have a physical challenge, it can feel downright overwhelming. But let me tell you, it's not impossible. In fact, with a little extra planning, you can be just as prepared as anyone else. First, let's talk about early warning systems. These are your first line of defense. Motion sensors, alarms, or even just a good old-fashioned dog can alert you to potential trouble. This extra time can be a lifesaver, especially if you need to evacuate or take other precautions. Building a strong support network is also essential. Neighbors, friends, or family members who are willing to help can be a game-changer. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Remember, we're all in this together. And finally, let's talk about your emergency plan. This is your roadmap to safety. Think about your specific needs and create a plan that works for you. Practice your plan regularly so it becomes second nature. I know this might sound daunting, but remember, you're not alone. There are resources available to help you, and the more prepared you are, the more confident you'll be. Moving on to the mental game. Your body might be the castle, but your mind is the king. It's the control center, the decision maker, and the ultimate survival tool. Think of your mind as a muscle. The more you work it out, the stronger it gets. 
and just like your physical body, your mind needs training. You need to prepare it for the unexpected. Imagine this. You're sitting in a quiet room and you start to visualize different survival scenarios. You see yourself making tough decisions, staying calm under pressure, and finding creative solutions. This mental rehearsal is like running drills in your mind. It helps you build confidence in problem-solving skills. But let's be real. When the chips are down, fear and panic are going to knock on your door. They're the ultimate party crashers. That's why you need tools to combat them. Deep breathing, meditation, or even just counting backward from 10 can be lifesavers. They help you stay grounded and focused. Remember, your mind is your greatest asset. It's what separates you from the animals. So treat it with respect, exercise it regularly, and you'll be amazed at how resilient you can become. In a bug-in situation, you might end up staying in your home for more time than anticipated. For that, you'll need to stockpile some food so you don't end up starving yourself. Click the video on screen now to learn more about the 12 crucial foods to stockpile for when things go south.